Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we are laying down the final challenge of the series. While there are many more topics I will go over in the future, this series is coming to a close and it's time to test your skills. First things first, requirements. So your task is to build a C Sharp .NET 6 console application to serve as a hospital administrative portal that has the following features. Before we go over each individual requirement, I do want to say this application is not representative of real life. A real life hospital portal would use a database system and a lot of complex logic. But what this does represent are a lot of real life building blocks, structure, good practices that will absolutely translate one to one to a real system. So first up, your application needs to provide the portal user with a help function to display available portal commands. So if you look over here to my application, welcome to the hospital management portal, type help for available commands. And if I type in the word help, press enter, I get available commands. Next up, we want to provide feedback when an invalid command is issued. So if a user enters any command that's not in the list of available commands, they should receive a message that their command is not recognized, please try again, or they can type help for available commands. Next, we have our first major feature, adding employees to the portal. And this also means storing them on the file system. So we're going to be able to add doctors who have a speciality, nurses who have a level, and custodians. While the requirement states that these specific employees with their specific traits have to be added and stored on the file system, it does not state how this needs to be implemented. So use good judgment, be creative, and have fun with it. As an example, I will show you how my prototype works. So if I type add and press enter, I have prompted for an employee ID, a first name, a last name, a job title, and a speciality. And when I press enter, the user is notified that the employee is added successfully and it reloads that employee. We'll discuss the loading bit in just a second, but as you can see, we have a directory employee files, and now I have a file 001. And if I open the file 001, you can see that all of the information that I entered is now stored somewhere in a file on my file system. And again, I will leave the implementation up to you. However and wherever you wish to store these files is completely up to you. Okay, next up, we need to be able to remove a specific employee. So if we use our remove command, we need to be able to specify an employee somehow. And when I enter my 001, it will notify the user that the employee was deleted and it has loaded zero employees because our employee has been deleted from our file system. Next up, we need to be able to load employee data into the system on demand. So if we use the load command, it will load whatever employees we have on our file system. And you may have noticed that anytime I do an add or remove when I even open the application, it calls this load method. That's an automatic load. You do not have to add that. I did it as a nice to have, but you do need to be able to load on demand. The reason behind this requirement is that we're going to say that hospital administrators have other tools that can come and change or update or create new data in our data system, and we need to be able to reload that data. Now for the load data requirement, we have been given a specific structure we need to follow. How you store this data is up to you, but this data must be read into the following structures. So you need an abstract class employee to hold the basic employee information, an interface iPageable that allows the page requirement, which we will go over in a minute, your basic program class that has your main and other business logic. You'll have a doctor class and a nurse class that both inherit from employee and iPageable, and a custodian class that inherits only from employee. So when the load command is called, all of your employees on your file system should be loaded into objects in memory in these structures. Next, we have the ability to view a specific employee, and this should be from the employees that are loaded. So if we do view, it's going to tell us that no employees are loaded. So we need to do another add. I'm going to add myself back here. And now, I can say view. It will ask for a specific identifier for an employee to view. I will give it my 001 and it will print details for my employee. Quick reminder that I automatically load my employee after adding them. 
if you do not implement an automatic load, you would need to call load after your ad to load your employees in before you view. Next up, we need to be able to page all medical staff. That includes doctors and nurses, not custodians. So if I use the page command, it's going to say paging doctor plays because I am a doctor and there is only one employee. So let's add maybe 002. Let's say Sam Smith is a nurse, level RN, added successfully. And let's also add employee 003. And let's do Jim James. And Jim James is going to be a custodian. And now we have loaded three employees. So now if I run the page command, it's going to page Dr. Plays and Nurse Smith. So if you had 50 employees and 20 were doctors or nurses, it should page 20 people. Our next requirement is to handle and report application errors due to file system operations. Now it would be great if you error handled everything you needed to error handle, but for this, the only requirement is to focus on file system operations. So say somebody went in and they deleted this employee files folder after it was created, or maybe even their file system had a restricted access policy to where the application couldn't read it. Well, then once we went back to our application and we tried to say, add somebody, and we created maybe 004, added them a first and last name, a job title, and a speciality. All of a sudden, we should get something along the lines of error creating employee file, please contact your system administrator, and then add the exception message that we received so we know where the problem happened and what it was. In addition to this, if an exception occurs and we cannot proceed, we don't need to let the user keep entering commands, so we need to prompt any key to exit, and when the user presses that key, the application should close. Our last requirement is to use object-oriented principles to ensure further system upgrades will be easily implemented. Now, in the real world, this would be a terrible requirement because it is completely vague and nothing measurable can come out of this requirement. But I put this here so you'll be sure to remember all of the things that you have learned about object orientation, follow this object oriented structure, use your encapsulation, and do things to where if they needed to add maybe another kind of employee, they could do it with ease because you followed these principles. Now I want to give you just a few hints that may nudge you on your way. So if you don't want these hints, feel free to close out and get coding. The first hint is in main. So before we have had a while through to process our input, but in this particular application, we want to exit if there's an exception that has been handled. So what I did was created a Boolean, and while the application is running, we process our input. But if we encounter an exception, we can set running to false, drop out of our while loop, and then very easily prompt the user to exit the application. The next tip I have is in structuring. So I have this process input method, and in there, all it does is take the input, and depending on what it is, it calls other methods. And that helps us separate all of this logic, because before we've only done one or two things, we could have the logic in here and it'd be easily readable. But now we do so many things, it's easier to have these break out into their own methods so you can keep track of what's happening where. The last tip I have is with inheritance. So inheritance is one of the hardest things for a beginner to understand. I'm just going to let you know that I created a list of our abstract class employee and then in page employee, I am able to go through each employee and say, hey, if my employee is iPageable, then I can cast my employee as an iPageable, allowing me to page it. And this lets me go through any employee that I have. And if the employee inherits from iPageable, then I can call its page method. Okay, that is the last hint I'm going to give for now. Good luck with this, have fun, take your time, and be creative. Next up, I'll be going over my solution to this challenge, digging into the code, and answering any questions you might have had. Thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, best of luck with it, and until next time, as always, take care.